Welcome to part 7 of Let's Play Scorpion Swamp by Steve Jackson. In the last part I began Grim Slade's quest, which is the evil one. Um, and I'm now on paragraph 9. Okay. Um, you are now on, or rather you are on the southern edge of Scorpion Swamp. Um, thanks to the brass ring you will always know which way is north, but you must still make a map. Um, you decide to map each path you follow and each clearing you enter so that you will know which way to go if you return to a clearing. For hints on mapping, see page 21. Um, you quickly find a path leading north into the swamp. A huge sign crudely painted on a boulder reads, Stop! Scorpion Swamp! Turn back! A skull and crossbones completes the grisly picture. Bravely, you stride past the warning and enter the swamp. Uh, you can see that it would be foolish to step off the path into the muck, so you follow the trail where it leads. Turn to 195. You are in clearing one. Actually, this is no more than a wide spot where three trails meet. The ground is very shaky and wet, and huge insects flit over the pools of water that dot the ground. If you want to step carefully across to another trail, turn to 58. If you'd rather just jump over the soft part, turn to 91. OK, we're going to jump over the soft part again, so 91. Roll two dice. If the result is equal to or less than your stamina, you made the jump. Otherwise, you fell short, caught your leg in the mire, and twisted your arm slightly when you landed. Subtract one point from your skill. You may now leave the clearing. Will you travel west, turn to 398, east, turn to 105, or south, turn to 208? OK, let's just do that dice thing. OK, two dice. And I get a 5, get, get rid of the buzzing, and 5 was less than 24, so that's that. So I was successful, and we are turning east, so turn to 100, um, 105. Ahead of you is a clearing. Unlike the last one uh, you found, the ground seems to be solid. This is clearing 12. Uh, if you have been here before, turn to 330. If you have not been here before, keep reading. Uh, you see several large flat stones, a huge hollow tree, and two other paths leading out. Will you sit down and rest on a stone, turn to 21, investigate the hollow tree, turn to 55, or leave the clearing immediately and turn to 390? Okay, there's the hollow tree. Okay, we're going to leave immediately um, and turn to 390. Uh, you have a choice of three paths. Uh, they all seem rather swampy swampy and hazardous. Will you go north, turn to 144, uh, east, turn to 209, west, or west, turn to 195? Okay, we're going to go north and turn to 144. Oh, that was quick. Uh, you notice that your path is crisscrossed by spider webs. There is a clearing ahead. Even before you enter it, you can see that the, uh, the surrounding trees are thickly festooned with webs and that there are many spiders there. Uh, you are in clearing 17. If you have been here before, turn to 345. If you have not been here before, keep reading. In the centre of the clearing there is a sumptuous pavilion which seems to float above the marshy ground. It is silver grey and it shimmers like woven spider silk. Seated in the pavilion is a tall man. His thick beard and eyebrows are white and his robe is as silver grey as his tent. Around his neck hangs a gleaming silver spider amulet. Uh, you know that you are in the presence of the Master of Spiders. As he regards you from his burning, uh, his burning green eyes, you feel your brass ring warning you of evil. Will you cast a magic spell, 10 to 74, attack immediately, 10 to 26, or talk to him in a friendly fashion, 10 to 332? Okay, we're going to cast a spell, so 10 to 74, and there's the Master of Spiders. Okay, so let's go to 74. OK, here we go. Um, you decide to combat the evil master of spiders with a spell. Which one will you use? Friendship, turn to, th turn to 361. Curse, turn to 261. Fire, turn to 113. Um, or none of these, turn to 144 and choose again. OK, we're going to choose a curse spell. So let's use up one of them. So I'll just say uh, one used. There we go. Um, and then let's turn to 261. 
An evil spell is the best weapon to use against an evil person, you think, and cast your cursed spell on the master of spiders. He screams as the curse strikes him and falls writhing to the ground. He seems to move and change, then he rises. The curse has changed him into one of his own creatures, a, a giant grey spider with a human face. Um, then you feel the effects of the curse on you. Roll one die and lose that many points of stamina. If you are still alive, the giant spider attacks you viciously. Giant spider skill 8, stamina 9. Um, you cannot escape. If you kill the giant spider, turn to 354. Okay, so roll one die and lose that many stamina points. Okay. I just realised that... Uh, I have it on D4 instead of D6, so I'm going to do that thing again and see if it's less than 24, first of all. So roll two dice and see if it's less than, tw uh, less than my stamina, which it is, of course, so that's pretty much guaranteed, so that doesn't really matter. But then I have to roll a D6, so I had it on, D I had it on D4, the old tetrahedron. Um, okay, so... Okay, I need to lose five stamina points. So let's lose five stamina points, and then we're fighting the, the giant spider, skill eight or whatever, stamina nine. Oh, didn't get rid of the... Oh, no, that was the goblin statue of the uh, Grimslade. Okay, giant spider. It was skill eight, stamina nine, yeah. Okay, skill eight, stamina nine, let's do this. Okay. Okay, roll for him first. My skill is, I forget, what is my skill? It is 10, and his skill is 8, so shouldn't be too bad. Okay, roll for him first. We have 8 plus 11, which is 19, and I get 20, blimey. Uh, 19 to 20, that was close. But it's all the same in the end, because I win. Okay, so that takes him down to 7. Okay, next, uh, 5 plus 8, 13, 13 to 19, that was more comfortable. Okay, next, uh, 18 to 19, that was close again, blimey. 18 to 19, so I win again, although, again, a bit too close for comfort. Um... 18 to 15, there we go. See, I knew I was, I, was, I was on a losing sort of path, if you like. 18 to 15, that puts me down to, to 17 stamina. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Um, 18 to 20, that was lucky, got two 10s there. Uh, so 18 to 20, that means I win uh, this attack round. Puts him down to 3. Okay, you get 7, that's 15, I get 15 as well, so no one wins that one. Okay, let's do it again. He gets a 7, that's 15 again, I get 10, that's 20, so 15 to 20. Puts them down to 1, so in theory just one more. Uh, 15 to 13, no, that was a famous last words moment, 15 to 13, so he puts me down to 15 stamina, right, okay, let's do it again, uh, 11 to 20, that was good, so I win that one, yeah, um, I did press it then, even though I got another 3, I definitely pressed it, so that was another 3, but for him this time, so that was 11 to 20. I promise. Anyway, so that's the giant spider dead. Let's get rid of the buzzing and let's play on. Okay, and we turn to 354 because we defeated the giant snake. Giant snake, giant spider, I can't even read. Right, 354. Okay, um, withdrawing your sword from the body of your evil foe, you sigh with relief. But all around you the spiders are lurking. They start drawing closer and closer. You bend down and take the spider amulet from the body. When you put it free, a spark seems to jump from it. Suddenly the body bursts into flames. You leave hurriedly. Uh, behind you the flames are spreading and you hope they will wipe out the evil spiders as well. Turn to 165. Okay, so we have the spider amulet. So let's just write that down. Spider amulet. There we go. 
165. There are only two exits from the clearing, um, from this clearing. If you go north, 10 to 388. If you go south, 10 to 105. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to go north, 10 to 388. Yeah. Here we are. Oh, it's this one again. Um, okay. After a short walk, you enter a pleasant grassy clearing. You see two other exits. This is clearing 24. If you have been here before, turn to 263. If you have not been here before, keep reading. You stand still for a moment, looking around you. Then you realise that there is something strange about the grass. It is growing up around you. So fast, you can see the movement. As you watch, you see nippers form at the end of the stalks. Uh, they snap at you. You are in the middle of a patch of crab grass. If you attack it, if you attack it with your sword, turn to 134. If you want to use magic, turn to 167. And there's, there's the crab grass. Um, we are going to attack it with uh, our sword, so turn to 134. Turn to 134. Okay, you hack at the crab grass with your sword. Uh, the nippers are easy to cut down, but more keep growing up around you. Fight the hungry lawn as though it were a single opponent. That's, there's two words you'll never see together, um, normally. Hungry lawn, as though it were a single op um, a single opponent. Crabgrass, skill 6, stamina 16. If you escape, turn to 187. If you cut down the crabgrass, turn to 81. Okay, um, well, there's no point doing that because we're going to escape, so turn to 187. So there's no point writing it down. 187, but we have to lose two points of stamina. It puts us down to 13 because that's the penalty for being a coward, apparently. Right. Anyway, there are three exits from the clearing. Will you go south, turn to 144, east, turn to 290, or west, turn to 10? We're going to go west, so turn to 10. And life is peaceful there. No, I don't like that song. Okay, uh, the knotted trees give way before you, and you enter um, another clearing. This is clearing 5. If you have been here before, turn to 142. If you have not been here before, keep reading. You realise immediately that there has been a battle here. The ground is torn up, blood is splashed over the dank swamp grass, and you can see two arrows sticking in a tree not far away. If you examine the clearing to see what you can find, turn to 59. If you decide to leave as quickly as possible, uh, turn to 227. Okay, we're going to leave as quickly as possible and, and turn to 227. Okay, here we are. There are three paths leading out of the clearing. Uh, the one that leads east is somewhat narrower and darker than the others. Will you go north, turn to 66, east, turn to 388, or west, turn to 320? Okay, we're going to go west again, because again life is peaceful there, and go to 320. Okay. Uh, the path dips slightly downwards and leads into a grassy clearing. This is clearing 29. If you have been here before, turn to 265. If you have not been here before, keep on reading. In the middle of the clearing lies a white creature. At first you think it is a horse, but, uh, but when it turns to face you, you realise that it is a unicorn. It appears to be wounded. Great claw marks score its flank, but it gets to its feet and lowers its horn at you, snorting a challenge. Will you run away? Turn to 268. Fight it? Turn to 221. Or cast a spell? Turn to 119. Okay, um... Um, okay, uh, just a moment, please. Okay, I'm back. Um, sorry for that. Um, okay, um, we are going to... We're going to fight it and turn to 221. There is a picture of the unicorn itself, so 221. Okay, you draw your sword and await the unicorn's charge. Unicorn, skill 11, stamina 4. You are fortunate that the creature is already badly wounded. You must fight it for two rounds. Then, if you choose, you may escape. Turn to 348. Uh, if you slay the unicorn, turn to 277. Okay, unicorn 11, 4. Let's go. Well, I do feel bad um, killing the unicorn, but that's what we're doing. So, skill 11, stamina... Four. Okay, let's do this. My skill is ten, so he has an advantage. Okay, uh, that's twenty-one, and I get 
16, so, so he wins the first attack round. Okay, next. Okay, he gets a 4, that's 15. I get 6, that's 16. So 15 to 16, and I win just. So 15 to 16. Puts him down to 2. Okay, next. Um, he gets a 2, that's 13. That was lucky. That's 1 out of 36 chance. So a 2, that's uh, 13 to 19. So I've killed a unicorn. That's the end of Mr. Unicorn. Good. Let's get rid of the buzzing. There we go. Okay, so 10 to 277 because we slew the unicorn. Slay, slew, slain. That's the present tense, past tense, and past participle, respectively. Okay, uh, the unicorn is dead. Knowing that you, uh, knowing that the horn of a unicorn has great magical powers, you cut off its horn and put it in your pack. If you would like to leave now, turn to 348. If you choose to stay and search the clearing, turn to 86. Okay, so we have a unicorn horn. Let's make a new line. And let's leave now, turn to 348. There are four exits. Will you go north, turn to 94, south, turn to 157, uh, east, turn to 10, or west, turn to 204? We are going to go west and to the 204. The path becomes wider by degrees and you see flowers growing here and there. Uh, this is clearing 23. If you have been here before, turn to 250. If you have not been here before, keep reading. Uh, but you feel the hairs on the back of your neck begin to stand up. Something is wrong. Your brass ring is warning you of evil. You look around and see nothing but the pretty flowers growing thickly along the path. Um, then you remember the old stories of the fear flowers. Uh, you know that the flowers themselves are frightening you. Their pollen induces terror. You are shaking now. Lose one skill point. Um, will you try to run past the flowers? Turn to 269. Attack them with your sword. Turn to 32. Or cast a magic spell. Turn to 80. Okay, so... First of all, we need, well, we've done this before, I'm, I'm, I'll do it all in one go. So we're going to run uh, past the flowers, so turn to 269. Because it's another skill point lost here, because we did this before. So I'll use two skill points. Uh, the fear intensifies as you run away from the fear flowers, lose another skill point. When you are past the bulk of the flowers, the fear subsides a little, turn to 267. Okay, so we've lost two skill points, that puts us down to eight. Good job we're not fighting the unicorn now. Um, actually, I'll probably just put... Nine, then eight, because that was technically how it happened. Right, okay. Uh, 367. There are two exits from the clearing. If you want to go north, turn to 304. If you want to go east, turn to 265. We're going to go north and turn to 304. As you continue north, the swamp seems to change in character. It becomes less gloomy and more like a tropical jungle. Brightly coloured birds flit through the trees. This is clearing 14. If you have been here before, turn to 149. If you have not been here before, keep reading. Ahead of you, on a low branch, sits a huge red and yellow parrot. As you come nearer, it speaks to you. Who are you, and what is your business with the mistress of birds? It asks. Will you attack the parrot, turn to 71, or ask, ask to meet its mistress, turn to 131? We're going to ask to meet its mistress and turn to 131. Assuming it has a mistress, how do you know it's not a master? How do you know it's female? Alright, okay. Uh, the parrot fixes you with a beady eye. Just walk forward, she knows that you are coming. You go through a screen of low palm trees and find yourself in a beautiful glade. Um, actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait just a minute. 204. I've been stupid, haven't I? Right, 269. Wait a minute. 367. Three hundred and four. Right. Now we know why. Yep, I knew I was stupid. <laughs> Ask to meet its mistress. It know, uh, you know it's a mistress because the parrot said, what is your business with the mistress of birds? Right, so my apologies um, for my imbecility. 
Um, yep, that's how we know it's a mistress because that's what the parrot says. So it's pretty obvious, really. So it's not a master of birds. It's definitely a mistress. Anyway, we're going to ask to meet its mistress and turn to 131. Oh dear, uh, that's a new low for me. Okay, the parrot fixes you with a beady eye. Just walk forward, she knows that you are coming. You go through a screen of low palm trees and find yourself in a beautiful glade. Thousands of coloured birds fill the air and the surrounding trees. Great herons and eagles stalk about. Seated on a low pedestal in the midst of this splendour is a lovely woman who you know must be the mistress of birds. She greets you by name and asks you your business. Your reply, of course, depends on your patron. Is it Poomchaka, 10 to 23, Selator, 10 to 164, or Grimslade, 10 to 288? And there she is. Doesn't look that lovely. Looks slightly manly, if you ask me, but... Um, anyway, uh, anyway, our patron is Grimslade, so we have to 10 to 288. We have no choice. Your ring is cold. Uh, you know that the Mistress of Birds is a good wizard. Well, I, I say again, can the uh, can a woman be a wizard? Because I thought women can only be witches, but I don't know. As far as I'm concerned. Anyway, around her neck, you see the silver bird amulet you have been sent to steal. Will you attack her? Turn to 391. Ask if she will give you the amulet. Turn to 184. Or cast a spell. Turn to 130. OK, we're going to ask for the amulet, turn to 184. Why not? Uh, you cannot bring yourself to attack her. You tell her about your quest and the evil wizard who sent you. Uh, she shakes her head pityingly. I should not help you at all, she says, for you are doing the work of an evil wizard, but you are not evil yourself, or you would not have been honest with me. She ponders for a moment, then she, smir then she smiles. Uh, this is what I will do. I, I will make a false bird amulet. Anyone who sees it will believe it to be a true amulet. Thus Grimslade will be deceived, and you will not have to trouble my brother wizards. Though, in truth, if you meet the master of spiders, you should slay him quickly, for he is evil. <laughs> uh, she waves her hand, and an amulet, seemingly the twin to her own, lies in your palm. You thank her for her kindness and leave. Tender 217. Okay, so we have the... Uh, uh, what is it? What amulet is it? The bird amulet, right? So we have. I'll just uh, I'll just call it bird amulet replica. So replica bird amulet. There we go. And then turn to 217. That was nice of her, wasn't it? The only way to leave the clearing is by the path on which you entered. Your footsteps turn south once again. Soon you'll be in the glade of the fear flowers. Oh, no. Turn to 250. Not again. You are you are in the clearing where you met the fear flowers. If you killed them all, ten to three hundred sixty seven. If you left them alive, you know that you need to run quickly to get past them without being consumed by terror. Ten to two hundred and sixty nine. The fear intensifies as you run away from the fear flowers, lose another skill point. When you are past the bulk of the flowers the fear subsides a little, ten to three hundred and sixty seven. It's another skill point gone. Another one, right, um, 367. There are two exits from the clearing. If you want to go north, turn to 304. If you want to go east, turn to 265. Okay, um, just before we go east, um, which is what we're choosing, I'm going to use the skill spell because uh, those fear flowers have taken quite a few of my uh, skill points. Um, now the skill spell will restore a maximum of half your initial skill, so my initial skill is 10, um, so the skill spell will restore a maximum of 5 skill points, uh, which is good because I, I only need 3 to get me to maximum. So that's the skill spell used, and now let's go east, turn to 265. Here we are. Um, this is the glade where you met the unicorn, but there is nothing here now. Turn to 348. Okay, 348. There are four exits. Will you go north? Turn to 94. South, turn to 157. 
uh, east turn to 10 or west turn to 204 we're going to go south and turn to 157 Now the path narrows menacingly. Uh, you wonder for a second if you have reached a dead end. Um, then it becomes wider again. You step into a very small clearing. You are in clearing 18. If you have been here before, turn to 279. If you have not been here before, keep reading. Um, you see several unusual trees around you. They are dark green and rather small with snaky limbs. Suddenly you realize that each limb ends in a sword and they are moving. You are being attacked by the dreaded sword trees. Uh, they are all around you now. If you want to fight them with your own sword, turn to 28. If you want to try a magic spell, turn to 203. Okay, we're going to turn to 203 and use a spell. But let's have a look at the sword trees. There they are. Very menacing. Okay, 203. Um, against these uncanny enemies, you decide to use magic. Will you try fire, turn to 75. Wither, turn to 393. Growth, 10 to 114, or none of these, 10 to 28, and fight. Okay, we're going to cast a Wither spell, so let's use that now. So, or the Wither spell, I only have one. Um, that leaves me with two Stamina and one Curse spell. Right, okay, so that's that. And then it's 10 to 393. Uh, you are certain that the Wither spell was intended for um, for just such a situation. I'll start again. You are certain that the Wither spell was intended for just such a situation. Quickly, you cast it on the sword trees. To your delight, they immediately turn brown and collapse. You look around the clearing. You find nothing except a few seeds, which look as though they might have come from the sword trees. You pocket them and go on. Turn to 22. Okay, so we have sword tree seeds. Okay. Um, how is my stamina doing? Eleven. Mm, that should be okay. Um, okay, we're now going to turn to twenty-two. Uh, ten to twenty-two. Uh, you pocket them and go on. Ten to twenty-two. There we are. Even as you pocket the seeds, you see new growth stirring at the base of the trees. You leave quickly. Will you go north, turn to 320, south, turn to 90, or, ele or, or west, go to 11? Um, we're going to go to the south, turn to 90. You have, crossed, uh, you have crossed several shallow streams, but now you are faced with a deeper one. This is clearing 34. You see movement in the water below, and you are not sure that you care to wade across. Will you use the ice spell, 10 to 370, use the wither spell, 10 to 254, or wade across very carefully, 10 to 44? Okay. Um, we are going to wade across very carefully in 10 to 44, since we have no ice spell. You are not attacked as you wade across, but when you reach the other side, you are disgusted to find several large leeches on your legs, drinking your blood. Roll two dice and lose as many stamina points as shown on the lower of the two. Uh, you may travel north or south from here. If you go north, turn to 157. If you go south, turn to 398. So roll two dice and lose as many stamina points as shown on the lower of the two. Okay, so roll two dice. Um, two d6s. Okay, so we rolled five and a four, so we're going to um, lose four stamina points, because that's the lower of the two. So we're down to seven now. Um, okay, we're also going to cast um, a stamina spell, um, because I have very low stamina. Let me just say one used. There we go. Let me just remind myself of what the stamina spell does. Um, we're on 44, so remember that when I have a quick look at the thing. When you cast a spell on yourself, it restores lost stamina points equal to half your initial stamina score rounded up. It cannot raise your stamina score past its initial level. So my stamina score is 24. Um, so it's going to restore... Um, 12 of them in total, so that will put me up to 19. 
because 7 plus 12 is 19. Okay, that's quite good. Okay, um, now we're going to go south. So 398. Uh, you enter a medium-sized clearing containing a small house built of logs. You are in clearing 4. If you have been here before, 10 to 239. If you have not been here before, keep on reading. You hear the low growling of a dog. Then you see that it is not a dog, but a wolf watching you from beside the house. Now the door opens and a big burly man steps out. Another wolf follows him. The man carries a sword and is dressed as a forester, but you know from the silver wolf amulet he wears that he is the master of wolves. You hail him in a friendly fashion. He answers gruffly, ordering you away. Will you obey and leave? Turn to 314. Cast a spell? Turn to 191. Or attack him? Turn to 120. Okay, there he is. Okay, um, that's the end of the video. I will decide what to do in the next video, so I'll just write down them on paragraph 398, just in case I forget, so 398. And we'll decide what we're doing with the Master of Wolves in the next video, so thank you very much for watching. Um, in the next part I should be able, yeah, I'll be able to complete this in the next video, so uh, um, thanks again and goodbye.